Good evening, everybody. Uh, we are back. To welcome to the spin. Uh, just two of us for now. Uh, Tyler is en route to uh, CrossFit Crash for the big showdown for quarterfinals. Uh, so it's just me and John. We'll see if uh, anybody else pops in like a couple weeks ago. So, John, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, still trying to recover from last week. I'm still uh, pumped that we got the we got that to pull off and had no flaws really. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody jumped on, did it, you know, without a hitch. So that was, uh, that was pretty awesome. So I'll be honest. I thought I was done doing, uh, a hundred burpees for time for a while. And, <laughs> and then CrossFit gives me 150 burpee <laughs> box jump over. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, obviously the quarterfinal workouts have come out today. Uh, this is, a big jam packed day. We've already had Pedro, uh, straight up and scribble. We've had coffee pods and wads with the round, the whiteboard. Now we're going. And then in an hour and a half, Savon podcast is also doing a CrossFit games update show. John, I think you're, you're filling in. You're going to jump right over from that too. I, I believe so. Uh, yeah. I forgot. I'll be frank. I'm, I'm glad you said something. I completely <laughs> forgot, forgot about that. <laughs> I guess, I guess hopefully <laughs> squeeze some, some waffles in between shows. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you get the, get the fair life right there. So you should be good. Uh, all right. Um, without Tyler there, if you guys, we're going to try the call in number again. So if you feel like calling in, ask a question, drop a comment, hopefully that will work this time. If not, we'll just pass on it again. Uh, all right. First topic, we we'll go back to viewer comments. Uh, first one from Sarah Lamb. Speaking of last week's hundred burpees for time, make it a one hundred series. Head go head to head, hundred wall walks, hundred meter sprint, hundred pirouettes, hundred calories on any type of machine. So many options. Great viewing. What do you think, John? That's not a bad idea. I'm I'm totally down for a hundred a hundred series. Um, I will yeah. let the pros do it and then um, I will pick what I think I can do. And then if somebody <laughs> wants to pay me a thousand dollars to do that every time, <laughs> I'm totally down for that. We want to, I don't, nothing can hurt more than last week. So I'm game for any hundred series you want to do. Yeah, we uh, had not, oh, I think we might have, let's see if somebody's calling here. Caller, hello. Nothing. Nothing. All right. Um, hey, we never caught up about your uh, 100 burpees for time and how you got wrangled into that and then beat five yeah. minutes or by a second. I feel like I got bullied into it, but it all worked out. <laughs> uh, dude, that was... When you did that, do you have any idea? Like, did you look at the clock at all, or were you just going as hard as you could? And no, I knew I would slow down after like 50. I was thinking I can keep 50 at this kind of fast pace, and it's a little bit faster than five minutes. It's like a 430 pace. Yeah. Um, and uh I knew I would slow down after that though. And I was just thinking, if you it's just 30 burpees to 80. So if you can just just keep slodging on. You get to 80, you'll be able to mentally. I was hoping I could just sprint at home at 80. And I got to 80 with one minute left. And I and I thought I was sprinting, but it did it didn't look like a sprint. Uh and then I just uh luckily, luckily got it in time. Yeah, that was that was fun to watch. Uh I thought you had it at first, and then it looked pretty ugly there around 50. I was I was nervous for you. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. Yeah, a lot of people thought I was gonna keep slowing down. I'm like, I'll have a sprint. It's just you know, getting there. Yeah. No, that was the question. That was, that was an amazing, I guess, 12 hours or so to watch Colton and Jake and then, uh, watch tater tot. And then yourself it puts into perspective morning. how fit those guys really are because I mean, I, I don't know if it's the hardest I've ever pushed myself, but like, I sold my soul to do that. And, uh, and they're just, they're beating it by, you know, <laughs> over a minute. So, so, so like, it's, it's pretty insane. And Colton just walks off 
uh, I, I, right after yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Uh, at Jesse Goodrich, thanks for making my day. And I bought a case of Spade. I'm a new Jake Berman fan. Tanya Bowers, great show. I bought a case of Spade with free shipping. I'm really curious to know how much Spade has been sold in the last week. We're supposed to get some, right? Have you, has yours been delivered? Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I got some. It just arrived today, so hopefully you'll be okay. getting yours soon. Uh, yeah, I haven't had a chance to try it out, but I saw the delivery notification. So, if you guys haven't tried it, go out get some Spade, uh, Jake Berman's drink there. Uh, at Sam Valenzuela, good job to the Iron Hog. Going to buy some Spade right now. Awesome video. It's three. And uh, at Avera, great show. You gentlemen seem to correlate complex movements and tests with fitness. Untrue. How many people can do 100 bar facing burpees in 319? Are you telling me any test could be simpler or that the test is not a gauge of fitness? What do you think about that, John? Does it have to be more complex? If you're testing for the fittest in the world, absolutely. If you're testing for who is the best engine, then no. Like we could test a 5K run. I would argue that's simpler than a burpee, than bar, 100 bar facing burpees. The fastest guy at a 5K run is not the fittest guy in the world. It has to be more complex when you're testing for the fittest man or woman in the world. It's not just an engine test. You yeah. know, um, Brent Fikowski, and I feel comfortable saying this. I don't think he'll get pissed off at it. Brent Fikowski is fi a fitter human being than Colton Mertens. Brent Fikowski has touched a peak of fitness that Colton Mertens has not touched. I don't care how many home runs Colton has. He's not been there yet. And, you know, probably isn't there now. You know, until he's top five in the games, he's not Brent Fikowski at all. And right. I think Colton Mertens in high school could beat Brent Fikowski now at a hundred bar facing burpees for time. So no. And yet like Colton is the best bar facing burpee person in the world. And he's one of the fittest men in the world, but he's also advantaged at being good at that movement. That doesn't mean it is the perfect test of fitness. It's, it's an engine test yeah. and it is going to be biased towards shorter people you know jake berman's not exactly a giant himself i think um, he's one inch taller than than uh colton yeah <laughs> oh he's yeah, i think he's a couple inches tall but but regardless regardless like those guys are not as fit as brent fakowski um i'll probably give colton the edge on hopper but you know he's not he's not yeah. beaten seventh in the world either but you know hopper's so hit or miss so i'll probably give colton the edge on hopper but like they can't dream of beating colton or jake in 100 bar facing burpees. So the test has to be more complex to get everything. It's not just an engine test. Yeah, there's there's 10 pieces of fitness. We got to measure more than just one, and that is an engine on burpees. So, and I, I think that was a lot of in context to, when you're talking about quarterfinals mm -hmm. and, in, and moving throughout the season, like when does that, when do you have to introduce the skills? When do you have to introduce different complex workouts or movements to find the fittest? And I think that's really, that's really what the context was. And 100 bar, bar facing burpees is a good test and it's a fun little thing to do, but it's not crowning the fittest in the world. It's a good engine test is all as, as I think if you want to say is a hundred bar facing burpees a good engine test, I would say for a sub 10 minute time domain, that's not like a sprint then yes. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's a good engine test. Yeah. Uh, Fergie show half Thor is the burpee king. I'm not sure about that, but, uh, uh, Julian Ifford is the phone line working. Uh, it doesn't appear to be the case. So I'll have to do some more testing on it. I don't know sure what's going on. It was working again earlier and then live show happens and it does not work. So, um, yeah, we'll have to catch up to that. So, uh, I think that was all of the viewer comments tonight. Um, again, a lot of them was kind of related to Colton and Jake and, uh, spade, but, uh, as for the big news, quarterfinal workouts are out, John, 
have you done any of the workouts yet? I did the clean and jerk workout. That's event four. Mm -hmm. And no, it's not because I think I'll be good at it. It's because it's the easiest one to do. <laughs> well, I want to get, I want to hear out how you did. Let's go and look at the workouts first, and then we'll get to that one and see how well you just did. So I did put out, put out an article with all the workouts as training camps and others put out tips and tricks. I'll be putting it out there. So if you want to go see that, go check out the barbell spin.com. It's the most recent article. Uh, all right. Workout number one. This is due Saturday at 5 PM Pacific time, four rounds for max reps of one minute of snatches, one minute of rowing for calories, one minute of dumbbell box step ups and a one minute rest. So do you want to analyze each workout as we go, as we go yeah. down? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So 135 pound snatches for the men, 85 for the women, 50 and 35 pound dumbbells, and then a 20 inch box for both the men and the women. This is kind of our, this is the fight gone bad that I thought we might see or fight gone bad style workout. We might see on the open. Now it's in quarterfinals instead. Thoughts initially on this one. Does this count towards your betting with the boys? I think it was in, or in the open. I don't think it, I don't think I get credit for it. That's brutal. Cause that's such a great call. <laughs> I, I think I like this. I like, so just for quarterfinal programming overall, if we're going to talk about it. I think they did a good job. <clears throat> I think, um, well, I guess we'll talk about this later once we get them all together, but overall, I think they did a pretty decent job. I think this one is the most strategy involved. Um, the, I mean, and I really don't know. I think it's going to be person by person, you know, who, if you're really good at one of these movements, then you need to hammer this movement. I don't know what's the best way to do it. I honestly am going like wait and kind of watch some, um, you know, YouTube people do it. I might wait and watch Taylor and, you know, the rest of the guys do it and, and see where more reps can be accounted for. Because usually in these type of workouts, there is a way to game it. There is always one of the movements that you can get more reps on than the other movements. Mm -hmm. Now, how to how to execute that to perfection is is unknown. I will not know until I can see people do it. Right. So um, I'm going to wait and see before I start analyzing it. But I do love the workout. Um, I love that. Uh, um, we'll see what the 20 inch box does. I think that's like a weird wrinkle that guys are 20 inches and, and girls are also 20 inches. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it definitely helps Colton in this situation. You say it helps Colton, but it's just going to make Hopper that much faster. It's fair. Fair. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I you definitely I, go faster on it. Yeah. I like that. It's a uh, dumbbell box step ups and not step overs. I think step overs are much harder, but step ups, you can do way more reps. It also makes it more of a squat, right? Like that squat feeling, it's gonna fill your legs up more doing step ups because you have to stand up all the way. Mm -hmm. I do think a lot of people are gonna cheat this and it needs to be, and Hiller is gonna have a field day on this one because I think a lot of people are not going to stand up all the way. Um, but I think this workout will hurt people way more than they think. It's if you want to be good at this workout to hold paces on all of the minutes, like I think it's going to hurt a lot. I <laughs> think, uh, uh, and that, that, and that rest minute almost makes it hurt more because you give, you give your body time to recover just so you can repeat the same pain that you just did. There is no slowing down. Speaking of gaming it. So Ben Smith took to Twitter and I'll just read it to you. He says quarterfinals workout. Number one is a rowing workout slash test. He adds not very much separation in either the snatches or the step ups for the guys. Rowing is the only movement you can really use to gain reps. If I was forced to include this workout, it would look better in the open than in the quarterfinals, but it's just his opinion. Fight gone bad style workouts are some of my favorite training workouts. I'm excited to get after it tomorrow. I just never thought of them as competition workouts due to the fact that all reps aren't quite the same. Mm -hmm. for, for example, a snatch 
at 135 is very different to me than one calorie on the rower. Mm, I, I agree with him somewhat, but I feel like if you're really fast, like you can do dumbbell box step ups at the same, at the same rate, probably a faster rate, um, than rowing calories. Cause like if you're rowing hard, but like not all out, but you're rowing hard, hard, like yeah. it's about 30 calories a minute, right? That's, that's one Did dumbbell box step up every two seconds. I think that's manageable. Now I, I don't like, I would not, I'd be able to do it for one round and then I would not be able to repeat it, Right. but the fittest will be able to repeat it. How many snatches in a minute? 15? That's tough, man. I think maybe 20. 10? Four sets 20, of five. Tw tw what's that? Four sets of five? Like, here's the thing. Here's the thing about that, though. Can you do four sets of five and then row hard? Right. That's the problem. That's where it gets tricky on this. Same thing with rowing. If you go 30 calories and you go straight into the step-ups, do you get 30 step-ups, too? Right. I also think that transitions are very important on this workout. I think this workout will take the most strategy out of all of them. But like, so for instance, if you're snatching, like I would want to be in the rower before my minute starts. If I think I can get the most reps on the rower, yeah. I would want to be in that rower by the time that minute hits. And then I would row all the way up to the minute. <laughs> and then just you know, you know what i'm saying yeah yeah like I, i'm surprised through. rowing was not the first of the four move or of the three movements so you could start like that you could start in the in the set in the seat like because you're gonna lose time trying to get in there get it started like you probably are better off to to not get that last snatch in the last five seconds to get seated and get ready 100 percent um you lose a lot I, more time uh so that one, quite the burner, 16 minutes total, 12 minutes of rest or 12 minutes of work. Just seeing this, do you like what you have so far? I mean, I think, I think the winner, I think the better you are at this workout, the harder it will, the more it will hurt. Like the fitter you are, the more this workout will hurt. For instance, I think this workout is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. But I think that I think it's going to hurt Taylor more than it's going to hurt me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because you're capable of doing more reps. It doesn't make it any less painful. Right. So the pain you feel is going to be the same. Like I'm going to feel the same pain as you, but then I'm doing more reps. So it's going to be more pain. Right. right. And then same way with Taylor, Dallin and Jason and Colton, they're going to be doing more reps than me. So it's going to be more pain. <laughs> like, so then, then it's just, uh, <laughs> But um, I do think if if we agree with Ben Smith, which I mean, I'll take his word for it right now, then I think it's between Dallin and Hopper. Roman? Well, I mean, for Taylor versus the world. Oh, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is that? Look, who, look who joined. What are you doing? Welcome to Here's Pussy. <laughs> Did you get yourself some brisket? No. We thought about it, though. So you, you, where are you right now? We're in Sevierville. Oh, that's, that's one of the big ones. That's like the, isn't that the I biggest Bucky's? Yeah. yeah. I, I drove past that a few months ago and saw it under construction, and I heard that it was going to be the largest Bucky's in the country. I stop, I stop in it every time now that I go to Spartanburg. I have like a, a few things that I do when I always go to Spartanburg or come back from Spartanburg, one is go to Bucky's. And now, because of Savon and uh, and Hiller, I always go to Popeye's on the way back. <laughs> it fits with the whole Spartanburg, uh, you know, sort of the aura. So how, how far away is Knoxville from, from Spartanburg? And how long have you been on the road? Been on the road since one ish. Um, I got another two and a half hours, three, probably. Vindicate Bucky's is on his list to stop on the way to Crescendo. So, yeah, anybody, tra anybody traveling? 
hit up Bucky's. Uh, before you get back on the road, Tyler, what are your thoughts on uh, the first workout? Uh, fight on bad style. I like that one. Um, I'm wondering because the box step ups are the same for men and women, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So I'm wondering, like, it'll even the playing field a little bit for the men, I guess, to get like the most reps. But I'm wondering who in the world sets the most reps and if it's a man or a woman. Oh, men all the way. Men all the way? Yeah, it's rowing calories, Tyler. If it's rowing calories and the height is the same box, it's not going to be close. That's a good point. They should have adjusted the row cows then, I think, to make it, like, more fair. You know who I really like for this workout? Who's that? On the the women's side? The claw. I think the claw. The claw! (laughs) The claw is going to dominate this one. If I was going to put any money on, I'd say the claw. I like that. Who do you think of the boys? I mean, I think I think Taylor has a good shot like in this workout. I mean, I know he's going against Jason and Dallin, but it's like, to me, the other movements make it even. Do you not agree? Nope. Nope. No, I, th- I think on the rowing piece, it's short enough, I think, that Hopper and Dallin can – My prediction can take is over it's going to go – Dallin, Hopper, Taylor, Colton. On that workout. On this workout, yeah. I don't know. I feel like Taylor's going to upset somebody on this one. I, I agree. Like, at first glance, I think it seems like Taylor shouldn't. shouldn't this is take power it. output on the lower, though. It's not endurance. It's, it's power output. It's not. It's not like. Yeah. An it's engine. not a 20 minute it's workout. It's way less engine workout. It's a way less engine workout. It's way more. So you think this workout is just all row, basically? That's what Ben Smith said. I think it's a lot of row. Fair enough. Um, what it, do you, I really like the handstand workout. The handstand push-up yeah. workout. You all I like that, that one? I love that workout, Tyler. We have, we have not gone to that one. Let's see if we skip one. It might be my favorite down. workout. It's workout three. We're going to work out three while Tyler's still around. So workout three. Three rounds, 10 handstand push-ups, 20 toes to bar. Then two rounds of 10 strict handstand push-ups, five rope climbs, and one round of 10 chest-to-wall handstand push-ups and 20 ring muscle-ups. There's your rope climbs, Tyler. You got half of it right. I'm so upset. I swear they were listening. (laughs) Oh, high rocks for me, man. I was ready. (laughs) Listen, listen. So, like, just just for all the, the people listening... I had to. I looked up High Rocks races to see. Oh, I guess I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to do a freaking High Rocks. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, there's only two in America this year, like uh, left. It's yeah. one's in New York and one's in California or somewhere like yeah, that. Anaheim. And yep. and uh, and I was like, okay, well, and I had it diagrammed because I was convinced that I was gonna have to do this. And I had a thousand meters mapped out in my gym. I had each station where I was going to put each station and I was just going to make it like a Saturday event where like we were going to do our own little local high rocks that I just created. And cause it's all the same stuff, right? It would just be very like backyard, but we would go by what, you know, they do like what station is um, in what order. And then I was just going to have somebody video me doing it and I'd be like, okay, I did my high rocks. I've paid my dues, um, but I don't have to anymore. So, <laughs> I'm happy for you, John. I would have rather GHDs than rope climbs, I'll be honest with you, but it's okay. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, I'm going to jump off here for that. I got to go. Right. Go out I'll get to a crash with crash. See you tomorrow. Uh, all right. So going back to, I guess we'll, we'll go back to the first one real quick. Um, in the world, Best man, best woman, John. I, you know, I think if I think if Dallin or I think if I think Dallin is going to smoke this workout, I really do. Um, ah, yeah. Roman, Roman is a good call too. Uh, I really just think, I mean, I, I agree with Ben Smith. I feel like it's just going to be who are your best rowers, but I feel like Dallin is one of the best, like grind work kind of guys, right? Out, out there. And he's like, I like him on the dumbbell, but I like him for like sprinting the row and then being able to hold pace in the dumbbell box step ups. 
I don't know what to think of the snatchers. Um, I, I don't like again. Like if you're great at them, you get what two, three reps maybe per minute. But at what expense, right? Like again, all it's going to come down to is how many calories you get, and then how much can you actually push on probably on that on those box step ups and eke out a few more reps. But I, I feel like the snatchers are going to be pretty much a wash for the top top athletes who are I do too. gunning for the top spot. I do too. Uh, workout two also do Saturday night, three rounds per time, 50 wall ball shots, 50 lateral burpee box jump overs or just burpee box jump overs. However you want to get over it. It seems like, um, because you can be facing the box if you want to, or you can do them laterally 20 minute time cap standard everything wall balls and box jumps i think this is the most devastating workout of all of the four and like it just looks like an engine workout but i want to put this in perspective this is 150 <laughs> burpee box jump overs now if you so like i've done a, a good a good engine workout i like for like regular regular people like if you have a decent engine at a regular CrossFit class or, you know, regular CrossFit gym, not competitors is a 10 minute EMOM, 10 burpee box jump overs. Yeah. If you can do 10 for 10, like you're, you're pretty good cardio wise, like an offer regular folks. Yeah. Um, and in a workout, I think that's a good pace. Um, right. Like if you're moving, you're doing other things. I think that's a really good pace. That's 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. 15 right. minutes. And then you have 150 wall ball shots in, in five minutes. All that. Yeah. In five minutes, which is on un basically unbroken. Um, I don't think very many people are going to finish this workout. I think this workout is I think this is one of the ones where like the elite will finish it. Um, but you like you have to be really good to finish this workout. It's not just something that like if you're decently fit, you can finish like this is an elite engine workout. I just think 150 burpee box jump overs is so many. And then not to mention like that, like the 150 wall ball shots, like it's taking it out of your press. So you got to think you're, you're doing 150 pushups too, mm -hmm. technically, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and that's, I think it's going to take a, like, your shoulders and your pressing muscles. I think it's going to take a lot out of those. Um, Travis your engine B. might be Travis. I didn't say, uh, I didn't say only elite will finish. I said, you have to be really good. This is one where the elite people will are, be different than really good people. Yeah. This is one where I think you look at it and you're like, Oh, everybody can do it, but to do it fast, it's going to take something special. Um, That's cool, Travis. How much, <laughs> well, have your girlfriend do workout four and tell me what she does with that. Okay. Uh, Get out of here, Travis. I like uh, Mirham. Mir Mir <laughs> uh, I would uh I'm gonna take Patrick Bellner to win for the men though. I think Patrick Bellner's gonna smoke workout too. How about uh Travis Mayer? Not as good as Patrick uh, Bellner. Not I don't think he'll be fast enough on the burpees. Yeah, I think and, the burpee box is, jump overs are it's way more of a burpee workout than a wall ball workout. Way more. About three times as more. <laughs> the, uh yeah, we know Travis, the other Travis, Vindicate Travis could not do this. No, I know, I know the time cap. <laughs> uh, world record time is 16.05. I don't know who that is yet. Uh, Velner looks older than Mayer. Velner's still fitter than Mayer mm -hmm. at this point. Um, how Colton, Dallin, Oh, Taylor, <laughs> like this is the yeah. hardest one to predict for those four. It's you the hard. I, yeah, I do. Why do you say that? I just don't know who's going to win. 
I think I think Taylor has a good shot at this one. I don't think he has a bad shot. Um, but I think Colt, I think Colton and Taylor will be the two that they they re- do the reverse of what happens in the first workout. Mm, I disagree with that. I think Dallin will still take third over Jason. No, I I out of literally all four of them, I don't know. I think they'll all four. I think Dallin and Hopper will be better than you think on this. Dallin and Hopper are the wall balls are nothing for them. Like here's it's about like what the the toll. I know they'll all probably do the wall balls unbroken, but it's the toll that that takes. It's the it's the energy that that takes in your shoulders and your pressing muscles. And Dallin and Hopper will have less energy expenditure on those than Taylor and Colton. And I know Taylor is awesome at burpees, but burpee box jump overs and, and burpees are different. I think Taylor, I think Taylor will be fine. I think he'll be in the running. He might win, but like, I just don't think, I li- I don't think it's a given e- any four of them ahead of the other one. I, this, I, this is the hardest one. I'm telling you, I think they're all going to be really, really close and it'll be come down to who can sprint the last 50 at the end, but it's not a six minute who can hurt more. This is just who is the fittest endurance wise. I think this is way more of an endurance test than a who can hurt the most test. Uh, Barkley Dale, uh, the be friendly stats department, uh, and Jeopardy wizard, uh, on get with the programming, uh, with the predictive model I've run workout two is the closest of all the workouts. Yeah. With my brain, I just said that Barkley, I don't need this, some fancy predictive model that I'm going to take five hours to build in the computer. I just think it, uh, how tall is Taylor? I think he's five ten. Um, he's probably five ten with shoes on. Um, I, I'm I'm five ten and I'm I'm a hair taller than Taylor. Well, like not a lot. Like we're basically the same height, but I I have him like by a, a very small margin. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea Miller, Emma Lawson, and Danielle Brandon for the women. I like the Emma Lawson pick. Dude, I don't know, man. I, I just, uh, you know who, you know who I would have picked for this workout. Emma freaking that? Carey. I yeah. think Emma Carey would rock this workout, <laughs> and she's not doing it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good one. Uh, yeah, it is step down, so you can't. But I, I don't think that matters. See, but well, I think it hurts people like Taylor. Yeah. Because you can't go as fast. I mean, it's kind of like um, it hurts Colton. What, what, what was that? What was it the uh, what was it called? Intervals uh, during the games with the step downs. Oh, like I don't think it's like that. I don't think. No, it's from like a standpoint of you can't make up that much ground on. Yes. On the box burpee box jump overs when you have to step down. But I think we will see it though. Like over a hundred and fifty, mm-hmm. they will. Start sure. Yeah. Yeah. Apart. You will. You will. I mean, in that workout, you could definitely make it back up on the row if you went hard. But by the time you got to the box jump overs, like you pretty much knew you were set. Um, this one, if the wall balls again, if you can do them unbroken, there's no room to gain. You're going to have to go hard on those. I, I think the elites are all going to be written the same, the same ballpark. Um, yeah, I I do think I think Daniel Brandon is a good call. Um. Emma Lawson didn't win the interval workout on the box jump. She won it on the row. Yeah. But she did well in. That's not a bad call on workout one. What's that? Emma Lawson. Like the more I think about it, I'm really liking that. Yeah. I would agree with that one. Laura Horvath. Laura Horvath might win workout one. She's very good at the rower as well. So. And the step ups, I'm sure, will not be an issue with her at all. No. Uh, workout three, JR's favorite workout. We already went through I, the I description. Like this. this is my favorite workout, too. Uh, probably the hardest when it comes to broadcasting, Taylor versus the world. Probably the hardest to do to set up your video to make it work for an affiliate. Um, if you were in being competitive, you can't do it in a class setting. You have to, uh, 
you got to move stuff around and figure out how to make this. So you're not running all over the place, but, um, a bunch of handstand pushups, I guess a bunch of handstand pushups, rope climbs, ring muscle ups, 15 minute time cap. I mean, how it, easy do you think this is to finish? <clears throat> hmm. For me, I'm not finishing. <laughs> for anybody that for anybody that makes it to the games, they finish easily. I'm doing the math right now. I mean, ten handstand push-ups aren't going to take anything. Uh at the end of it, it might. No, I'm saying the first ten handstand oh. push-ups. Like you get through those first couple rounds in a few minutes. I think this will take me twelve to thirteen. Right. So if it takes you 12 to 13, I mean, again, anybody at the games is going to be finishing well under the time cap. Right. You know, for sure. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I'm just, I was just wondering. Is this, uh, is this one where Tyler beats you? No. Tyler didn't beat me in one open workout. I thought he beat you in one. No, he beat me in the workout one and then I and redid, he redid it. it. Oh, that's and right. Then I beat, yeah. <laughs> No, I like his best shot at beating me is something that's very easy to do. The harder it is, the better I'm going to be. Like if these were chest to wall deficit handstand pushups, I would rank even higher. If they were, if it was 40 muscle ups, I would rank higher. Like I'm not, I'm not beating people like Taylor, but like, you know what I mean? Like the harder the workout looks or is hard to do. The higher that the higher I just, I, know, rank. I just know Tyler, if he's going to beat you anything, it's probably going to be the gymnastics. Yeah, he's so. he's he's really good at handstand pushups. That's his best thing. But I'm also very good at handstand push I, I think he likes bringing up handstand pushups because he's really good at it. But I, we're pretty much the same on handstand yeah. pushups. Yeah. Uh, are you surprised to see rope climbs after teams not having it? A lot of talk about most affiliates could do it. I mean, well-equipped garage gyms can do it. I, I don't have a 15-foot garage, so that doesn't matter. But are you surprised to see it, given kind of where we're at in the programming? Uh, yeah. Y'all had me convinced that it wasn't going to be there. <laughs> um, Y'all had me convinced that quarterfinals was going to be trash. And I'm not, um, I'm not mad at quarterfinals at all. I, I think... I think in the past, like we would have had a fifth workout, and that fifth workout would be something sprinty, yeah. like uh, like like the thirty cal row, twenty burpee box jump over, ten snatches, one eighty five. Like we would have had a workout like that as the fifth right. workout. Um, and so like I, obviously, I biasedly would like that, like would like to have that. But but as far as the four workouts, if it's well balanced or not, I think it's really really well done. Like this is all gymnastics, all mm. gymnastics. It's not necessarily breathy, but the fitter you are, the more breathier it will be because you're not going to stop from muscle fatigue. Right. Um, the same with the barbell. The stronger you are, the or the fitter you are, the more reps you'll do. The stronger you are, the yeah. fitter you get. Blah 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 blah. But it's all barbell. Um, and then the second one is all engine, straight engine. And then the first one is a little bit of everything. Um, it uh, a little bit biased in the engine side, but you know, it's, it's a move one thirty five over though. and over again. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's more it's power output repeats, right? right? Um, so like, I think it's a very very well balanced test. Um, my only nitpick would be is that like I would have liked another barbell on the strength one. But we'll we'll get there when we get there. But I love yeah. this workout. I think this will be the most fun workout to do. Um, I think it's very grippy, and I think this is going to be the workout that Taylor wins. This is Taylor's. I think Taylor's going to win it. I know everybody's going to want to pick Colton, but you show me something that Taylor can't do, and Taylor is a monster on ring muscle ups. If it was more handstand push ups, I might pick Colton. But Colton might have a slight lead, and then Taylor will make that up on the rope climbs. I know Colton's not bad at rope climbs, but 10 rope climbs is a lot. 
If Colton do think, has to do two and a half, do you think goals, anybody breaks? Do you think Colton or or Taylor break up on any of them? The on the ones up. that you can't do, you think they can't. They have to break up on the twenty muscle ups at the yeah. end. Yeah. Ten ten or eleven nine or something like that. I I don't know. <laughs> uh, I I I I I would yeah. be shocked if they didn't break. <laughs> I'll say I'll put it like that. Here's the thing: is that you're going like yes, you see twenty muscle ups in the end, and you think man, they'll be capable of that for sure. You're not wrong, but they're going to go ten handstand push ups and then twenty toes to bar unbroken as fast as they can, and then they're going to go ten strict handstand push ups unbroken, five rope climbs, two rounds of that as fast as they can. Their grip is going to be shot. And then they'll have 10 wall facing handstand push ups. They'll be able to do that, but yeah. it is going to take it out of your muscles, like your, your shoulder muscles. And like, I just don't think that's so much to do to then just do 20 muscle ups unbroken. You know what yeah. I mean? And I think probably doesn't really, I mean, unless it's a really close race, it probably won't matter. Right. You can come down once, shake it out five seconds, go back up. It's not going to make that big of a difference if you've right. been able to go unbroken or, or make it up the, the rope climbs easy. Uh, any predictions on the men's side? As the winner? As the overall winner worldwide? Mm, Noah Olson. If he does it. Oh, that's right. He's not. He's if not. he does it. Um, what about Victor Hoffer? Mm. Is there enough? separation there to be able to do something like that i don't know does he does he do here's the thing like i don't know if he's a I mean, he's highly skilled he can do all of it very well i know but that hand the handstand push-ups might tire him like yeah he's a great gymnastics right. but like handstand push-ups there's not like it's more of just muscle fatigue put in your arms um yeah. hmm adler I don't know, man. Adler's a decent call, but he's going to win workout four. So I, I can't pick him for this. This one. is one where I would say that Colton has a chance of winning the whole thing, which if you say that Taylor has a chance of beating Colton, I mean, yeah, I think Taylor's got a shot. The very top. I think Taylor's got a shot to be a top tier score. It's hard for me to pick Taylor against somebody like Belner. I feel like Belner will just find a way to be faster. There's a reason he's the yeah. second fittest guy in the world for however, however many years. But I think Taylor will have a top tier in the world score in this workout. Yeah. Um, On the women? I think Alexis Raptus is going to be really good at this workout. Very, very um, good at this. Uh, Alexis Raptus. I think Alex Gazan will have a re will be really good at this workout. I would; those two would probably be my pick. Yeah. I w I would agree with that. Uh, Rebecca Fusile. I okay. Here's the thing. I think I think their fitness will overcome Fusilay's gymnastic prowess. For instance, Maybe. I just I I don't think either of those two uh, care about the open at all. This matters. They're going to take this seriously. This is the workout of the day. Uh, Wadzami no Spiegel. Nope. Uh, and then we'll move on to the last workout. Workout four, John, you've done this one. 10 clean and jerks, rest a minute. 10 more clean and jerks at a bigger weight, rest a minute. 10 more at a higher weight. And then the max reps, 245 for the men, 165 for the women. How many total reps, John, did you get this afternoon? Well, I don't know if I want to reveal all that, man. You don't want to, you don't want to give somebody a target to go chase? No, I, I think I said it already, but... I know. I think I'm gonna keep it. Not say it again. Gunning for that top spot. I don't mind telling top people my score, but there's a lot of people that are my on my level that I don't. I don't feel like telling. You, you don't want to give it to them. All right. Yeah. All right. No, it's already out there. So I, I commented it, and then I was like, I probably shouldn't have commented it. <laughs> uh, the one super heavyweight. It's all barbell, not paired with anything else. Do you like that? Not not I you think, personally, but as a yeah yeah. I think if you're gonna court. have the all gymnastics workout they just had, then like this has to be all barbell. And yeah. I I really feel like you have an all engine one, an all gymnastics one, an all lifting one, and then one that's a little bit of everything. 
And for four tests, I think that's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, My only nitpick is I would. I wish there was one more barbell. I think, for instance, like I like what slowed me down was breathing. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I was just tired. It wasn't strength. Uh, So like I do think there'll be like guys that are fitter than me that will beat my score that aren't necessarily stronger than me. For instance, something like Taylor will beat will beat my score just because he's fitter. Yeah. Where like if there was a two sixty five par uh, sixty five pound barbell, um, and like if you guys think if you have that minute rest again, like you're gonna have like one minute one minute to do two sixty five. Right. Um, for like guys who are strong, like you'll have you'll have around one minute to do two sixty five, and I think that would have been an amazing race for like one like you know what I mean just one <laughs> yeah. minute to do 265 as many as you can. And that's a heavy weight to try to cycle as fast as you can. Or 245 for especially the elites, I don't think there will be a ton of separation. There will be there will be separation. I just don't think there will be a ton. And I think if you had one more barbell, there would be. But I but I was super nitpicky. I think it's a great test. Um that's can my any, only qualm with it. Can anybody beat Laura Horvath? No. On the men's side of the games, people. No, Laura Jack Harlow have more than every men too. <laughs> yes, no, I, I'd pick at, Jeff at Adam. the one. At definitely at the one sixty-five. Um, guys, if you're not listening to me. You're picking Gee and Jack Harlow. It's a two forty-five pound barbell. It's not heavy enough for those guys to beat people like Jeff Adler. He's too fit. I don't think Gee or Jack Farlow will be top ten. I don't think they'll be top 10 in this workout because there's not an, it's not heavy enough to have that type of separation. Um, I think Jeff Adler's untouchable in this workout. I don't, I can't see anybody beating Jeff in this workout. You go look at yeah. any workout, wherever he's cycling a heavy barbell, he is the best by far. There's nobody close, right? right. Well, how did Jack Farlow do in 225 grace at rogue? Somebody want to tell me how Jack Farlow did in 225 grades? Because he wasn't freaking yeah. close to Jeff Adler. <laughs> That's what the freak I'm talking about. It's still fitness. Yeah. Like what I'm saying is it's not, it's a fitness strength test. The gymnastics workout is a fitness gymnastics test, right? Like, and that's fine. That's how it should be. Uh, if you wanted to make it more of a strength test, there should be another barbell. But if you don't, that's okay too. Like, I still think it's a great test. Um, but you need to stop with the Jack Farlow and the Gee Malharos. If Jack Farlow and Gee Malharos have a top score, that means I also will have a top score. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I am not going to have a top <laughs> score in this. It will, it will be good, but it, it's not going to be like an elite thing. There's the fitter guys will be ahead of those guys. I think yeah. Dallin Pepper will win for the guys on the. On uh, Taylor versus the world. Yes. Yep. Uh, so those are the four workouts. Um, Who do you got in that one? I do think that I, one. Will I be think fun I to think watch. Adler. Adler, I think is again. I think the the initial reaction is what no, the comments no, no, no. were saying. Taylor versus the world. Oh, Taylor versus the world. Possibly Hopper, but I think it'll be Dallin Hopper. And then I think Colton will be pretty good at this one, man. I think so too. I think that da- I think Dallin, I think these li- these workouts line up very well for Dallin. Very, very well. Ah, he's he's he generally does really good at quarterfinals. He's I think um yeah. I quarterfinals lines up really, really good for him. Um it's and then I think semifinals lines up really good for Jason. Yeah. Um yeah, completely agree. Uh, all right. I want to shift now. Up. Oh, LDY 2742. John, you're going to have to redo this. Nope. <laughs> one and done for everything. For you, John. I think I think if I repeat, I think I'll repeat the gymnastics one. Um, like I'll probably do it as good as I can and then try to pace out what would be better than that or where I got slow and then yeah. try to try to pace that one um 
the burpee one i will not redo for the fact that it's going to be the worst one i'm just going to give my best effort and that's going to be what it's going to be uh the and then workout one i i kind of think as long as i'm smart about it and i execute well it'll be you know it'll kind of be hard to beat as far as uh like if, for me to beat it again because they're yeah. just one minute intervals if you do it right the first time there's nothing you can really change right you know what i'm saying yep uh all right so i don't know if you guys have watched i don't know if john you've had a chance to watch um Pedro, Coffee Pods and Wads did, I don't know, five or six of these strictly press, uh, basically a, a press interview um, of a bazillion different coaches, sometimes coach athletes, went through them all. I went through all, clipped them out, got 14 minutes of some of the best content. I want to go through it. Um, I highly recommend you guys go back through. Um, I pulled just a few clips for us to kind of discuss. As you listen to these, John, I want you to try to think, are they telling the truth? Okay. <laughs> or are they giving a spin to Pedro? Because if you listen to it, you'll find a trend. Most of it is very positive. So take a listen. It's at one and a quarter speed, so we can get through a little bit quicker. Um, we'll go through a whole range of stuff, similar to what Savan does with the weekend review. Um, so here we go. Amanda, how are things going there? How's her injury? How's she feeling? Yeah, good, Amanda. We're in, obviously, we've all just come over to HWR, uh, HQ now in Vermont. Everyone got in yesterday. So we've done one training session so far, and it was a big muscle up session. Um, picked all the boxes. Great progress made in the last few weeks, especially. Yeah, you... Amanda Barnhart doing some muscle up sessions. Everything's great. When you look at quarterfinals, do you think he's telling you better hope that everything went great of those muscle ups? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, everything that she's going through, I know she's been doing some based on the quarterfinal workouts. There's only 20 ring muscle ups. Do you think she gets a pass on this one? Like she can qualify based on what we have the workouts? Yeah, would, I do. Would I something do. like that be an issue? I do. Well, Amanda Barnhart is a very, very good at handstand push ups very good at handstand push-ups so i think where other women will be slow she will not be so like if she's cautious on it's just 20 at the end so if she can do them like really at all yeah. she could go six five five four and still and just kind of coast that in and it's still a hard enough workout that she'll be fine plus take that into account she's going to mash the rowing interval one and then mash the clean and jerk one right like she's got and then the burpee ones are not going to match, but <laughs> but uh, I, I think I think with these workouts, I think she'll be I think she'll be fine if she can do that. Like if it's pain free and she can do them, even if she's cautious, I think she'll be fine. Yep. Here we go. There's hesitation there, but it's just because the shoulder's not in the same position it was a year ago. Mm -hmm. But progress is is uh, is definitely happening. Um, what about Brooke? Uh, very similar. So Brooks Brooks here as well. We've got Brooke and Amanda, um, and we've just run through another very similar uh, session. It's like it's like a similar injury, but but also quite different at the same time in terms of what they need to do to, um, you know, help the, the, the issue get better. Brooke Wells, torn labrum. Also muscle ups been an issue. I saw that she posted something on Instagram. She, she's doing them again. Same situation as Amanda kind of got a, a pass on these quarterfinal workouts. I think it's different for Brooke. Oh, different. How so? I just don't believe in Brooke. <laughs> that, that simple? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, if Brooke makes it, cool. I don't, I don't really think Brooke is going to be that good. <laughs> so, what, so. what, what would your odds be that Brooke qualifies for semifinals? Mm. She's still one of the fittest women in the world, is the thing. Like, you know, right. Um, I mean, the first workout, I don't think the snatches, 85 pound snatches are not going to be an issue for her. I'm going to say 50, 50, 50, 50, really all yeah. because of this gymnastics workout. No, I just don't think she's going to be, 
I think Amanda Barnhart will be good, better at, than her at, at three of the four workouts. So like, even if their shoulders are the same, I think Amanda Barnhart will just be better than Brooke Wells. Like, I don't think, I think Amanda Barnhart will be a better than Brooke, um, at the clean and jerk workout. I think she'll be better than Brooke at the rowing workout. I think, and then at the handstand push up ring muscle up workout, I think she'll be better than Brooke. I actually think Brooke will be better on the burpee workout, but three versus four. You know what I mean? So like yeah. say Amanda's 24th, Brooke is 50. You know, you see what I'm saying? I, I, I'm not as negative on Brooke as you are. Um, I think, I think the programming actually fits both of them to make it through much better than we thought going into today. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's not stuff that she's not going to be able to do, but women, women are fit, man. Like I just, yeah, but you got to look at the, the 40th person that's going to qualify You're, it's, it's out of fair. North America East. Like, yeah, I, I think they have a lot of leeway to try to, to make and the women are not as good as the men, like depth wise. I, I, you know, you're right. You're right. I yeah. think, um, she the, should make it. There's nothing. It, it's it's not like the first one isn't three rounds of 20 muscle ups or three rounds of yeah. 15 muscle ups or something like that on it. Like I get it's at the end. But again, like she could do doubles and probably still make it through and still be the, the, her. That'd be her worst workout where she can still. I'll put it like I think Miriam Von Roar beats both of them. Overall worldwide ranking. Yeah. Could be uh josh marilla talking about Haley adams uh, moving or you know throwing an eye beyond quarterfinals into semifinals is that something that you're in any way concerned about like in-person competition and the fact that it's been a while since she's done it and or, or are you expecting her to just slip back into that kind of mode of focus um we've actually had lots of conversations about this um she doesn't treat the quarterfinals any different than she would semifinals and uh you know she's a very seasoned athlete so you know we're gonna rely on that experience the last just rely on the experience get through it i mean i, I feel like Haley again she's just gonna cruise onto this yeah and Haley's uh, been and Haley's a 90 percent lifter right? right which means like she can move 90 percent of her max really really well Right. And I don't think the weight is heavy enough to stop Haley. I think she'll be able to do 165 fine. I think she'll be able to power clean and power jerk all of that. And so I think she'll do well at the clean and jerk workout because it's not the only thing Haley doesn't do well is top top end strength. That's the right. only thing she doesn't there's, do well. There's nothing in this. Everything else, Haley is a monster. That's literally and Haley, like not not, not just like she's good, she's a monster at everything. No except top in strength right and and that's why she'll never win that's why she might not podium ever because you have because she takes last place in these in you know two workouts every year um right. but if it's not those things she is she's one of the best women in the world now, i don't know if she's still that because she took a hiatus but i'm going to believe she is until she shows me that she's not anymore when it comes to Glaisa Brooke, which is why I'm so down on Brooke, she's shown me that she's not anymore. Right. Right. And like maybe she just had a bad year. She comes back. She's great. Well, she was, That's she awesome. definitely hurt. But That's awesome. Uh, Shows show that resilience. <laughs> right. And make it back and get back to the game. She definitely was hurt for sure. And I'm probably way too hard on Brooke. But if she makes it back to the games, then she's made it back. I'll have more faith in her. But yeah. That's why I don't have faith in her because she's already shown me that she's on the downhill trend, right? Barnhart took a hiatus, still made the games, was just hurt. You know what I mean? Uh, I guess. I guess. I, I still would put Brick as being able to qualify for semifinals easily. Uh, oh, Ariel Barnhart? Lowen? Yeah. I think both. I think both, given this programming. I don't think... I think, I think looking at a lot of it, like, like I talked about last week, I think this really looks like beefed up open workouts from six, seven years ago from the mm. style of what they're testing. I think it just looks like open workouts five years ago. Some degree. But yeah. I mean, I guess with the 50, we had 265 snatches in 2017, 265 snatches. Now it's clean and jerks. 
at 245. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, somebody wants to put High Rocks back on the table. Can you do a High No, Rocks? absolutely <laughs> not. Because she should make it. She should. <laughs> she absolutely should make it. But if she doesn't, she's been headed that way. That's yeah. all I'm saying. She absolutely should make it. It should be fine. She should be great. She should make the games. She should make the games. I'm just saying, if she doesn't, she's been on the downhill train. All right, here we go. Ariel Lowen. Last, we saw you quite a busy offseason. Um, you were in Birmingham. Um, the Open and that travel and the kind of hectic offseason, are you feeling good? Are you feeling like there's no like little niggles or wears and tears? The niggles. That was definitely a trend if you watch any of these. Um, big uh, big uh, niggles type guy of Pedro. Is there anything that you're concerned about the next couple of months? Yeah, as Ariel Owens coach of Ariel Owens, the biggest thing right now is like pulling back the reins of a horse. I know it needs to be done. Um, probably after quarterfinals, I'll start ramping up a little bit. But right now, it's just like making sure, like, I'm just chilling. I'm just relaxing. I'm having fun. So when it's time to go hard, we let the reins go and we go crazy. Your boy. It's a smart move for somebody like Ariel. Yeah. Just I mean, cruising. I think... you... Go ahead. Is there anybody that has that you'd have a concerns about, like they need to peak for quarterfinals that were at the games last year? No. Is it pretty pretty simple? Yeah. I think people like Yella Hosta need to be fitter than people like Ariel Lowen. I think he needs to have okay. like a little little mini peak. <laughs> uh uh, maybe even like Bukowski, yeah. where like you just know four workouts. If there's one that you are disadvantaged because of your size, it like you, I mean, you know that, right? Like, so, yeah. and they're smart, they're smart people. Like, so, like, I feel like those guys might need to be closer to their peak fitness than somebody like Ariel Lowen, who's just going to be good at everything. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, but no, yeah. Uh, Matt Torres from brute he's then so james and dallin both came off huge seasons james you know it was it was great for james to have the showing that he had at wadapalooza <clears throat> you know finally we're putting together a healthy year for him uh healthy year i think james just posted that he hurt his back or something like that like last week um so that's where i'm talking about like do we believe everybody that's <laughs> it's on here right like is james healthy or is he not i don't know uh, you know, he's hitting his stride nicely as far as the strength gains that he needs to be making. I'm, I'm really excited for James this year. I always told people that I thought James was, um, you know, born to be a games athlete. The dude's naturally aerobic. Um, you know, when the when we get to the CrossFit Games, it is extremely important to uh, be able to get out and run, be able to do some uh, longer um, odd object things as well. Coach Al then has a few uh, people on his roster. So, you know, obviously John Young. There you go, John. John Young. Uh, Danielle Brandon, Kelsey Keel, uh, Rose Scott, are they all feeling good, firing on all cylinders, no injuries, no niggles, no you know doubts and anything there? Kelsey, this has been her best year of training so far. Um, stepping away from team, coming into the individual side. Uh, I mean, we can follow her her progress pretty much like weekly uh, on her Instagram story. So you can, you can kind of see like she looks like a completely different human, uh, but she still has that strength that she, that everyone knows her for. Does it... John, you train... Under Coach L, along with Kelsey, mm -hmm. do you do you guys see how each of you guys are doing? Do you share? Like, do you have a kind of a message board or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, we don't. Uh, I think I talk to Kelsey maybe like a DM or two once every two weeks. It's not like a, a lot or anything like that. But um, but I worked out with her at the camp at the we have a brute camp and and worked out with her and Ariel Saunders. I think that's somebody. Our Ariel Saunders mm -hmm. is somebody to watch out for. I think she'll make semis. Um, another athlete on, under coach up, but yeah, Kelly or Kelsey, Kelsey is ripped the freak up. Like she, whenever he goes, she looks like a different person. She really does. I'm really excited what she to see what she does. The clean and jerk workout. She might give Laura a run for her money. I don't. I don't think she'll beat Laura. Listen, Laura is no. Laura is not touchable. Okay, I, I will not bet against Laura Horvath in a lifting event. Yeah. Laura is untouchable. But I bet you Kelsey does something crazy too. Um, and 
for the most part, these workouts line up good for her. The Barbie one's going to be rough, but uh, it's going to be rough for a lot of people. So, uh, <laughs> she, um, I didn't realize this, but she's she moved to Louisiana, so she is in the yeah. West. Yeah, yeah, so. no, and 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 like training every day with Ariel and Will Leahy comes out there sometimes. Brandon Luckett, he trains there sometimes. Brandon Luckett's like an hour away, so like they get together a lot. I'm telling you, like Kelsey Kill is a name to 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 watch for because. I, I think people kind of disregard her a little bit. Dude, she she's coming. Um, yeah, after after her Wadapalooza qualifier, I think people were concerned. And by the but, way, we did two we did two Wadapalooza workouts as part of the camp. Like it wasn't even we weren't fresh yeah. or anything. And then we just did it. We did workout five, five minutes after workout four. <laughs> so like it wasn't like like you know, you see these rankings, everybody's not the same. Like I know. Uh, for the fittest experience, there was a guy, there's a guy that I, I talked to from time to time. Um, and like, he like peaked for the fittest experience qualifier. Like he was everything to him. And right. this, it, it was like the second workout of my, of my training session for, for me. Like it wasn't something I peaked mm -hmm. for. It's just, I was sore half the time when I did that stuff. And then, um, cause I thought I'd have no problem getting in. Right. Like, uh, you can't just look at qualifying. You can't look at qualifiers. You have to look at the stuff that matters or in live competition. Qualifiers mean nothing because you don't know everybody's situation when they're doing them. Um, the only thing that matters is open quarterfinals when you see their videos and then semifinals live action, unless it's like Wadapalooza or Rogue and you're like, you're actually there. Right. Yeah. But no, I think I'm excited to see what she does. Yeah. Uh, Fergie show. What about Tia still hurt? You have to watch. Okay. Well, Nick, Nick Johnston was interviewed. It's oh, coming. She's, she's niggled up. Yeah. She has, has a few niggles, but, uh, is improving. Is it different when there's a bit of a target on his back? Um, I think it feels different. Definitely. Like now that we've achieved the goal, like the expectation is there where it wasn't in the past, but in terms of just training and how we approach the season, everything like that, it's, the same basically like we always try to adapt every year change something make sure that we're pushing his fitness forward like the goal if you want to win the game is to be the fittest so i need to keep improving your fitness the goal has been achieved we'll see the workouts aren't the same yeah and i don't think he was the fittest in 2023 he was one hurt broken foot from being second fittest yeah i and i and listen jeff jeff adler has just as much of a chance to win the CrossFit games as two other people. He really does. I I don't think there is much separating those three guys at all. And I think they all have their own type of home runs. And the more we learn about the games, the more the picture will become more clear. I think the fact that um, it's indoors, mm -hmm. hell, uh, he usually does really good at the indoor workouts, but then like, but you also look like, I mean, he was really good at the bike. He was really good at the run. Those are also stuff that Ricky is really, really good at. And in Roman too, like all three right. of them are good at the outside stuff. So, right. If anybody though, I would say Adler is probably the least is the worst at odd things thrown at him for sure. But I don't think being inside negates the odd things being thrown at them. Right. And I think right. Dave will be very creative and finding if since most of it's inside, there's going to be a creative odd thing. There's probably going to be a couple of them. Right. Um, and then it's just going to be who adapts the best. And I will say, I think Roman is the best at adapting. I think Vellner's the best at adapting, period, out of all of them. Really? But yeah. Vellner? 100%. 100%. When something new comes up that we've never seen before, Vellner is better than everybody. I think Vellner is more athletic than everybody. I think I think Vellner adapts better than any other athlete. I would argue that's his greatest trait. Better than Matt Fraser. If it's something neither one of them have ever seen, Patrick is usually really, really good. Climbing snail. What did he get? He got second place. Fakowski was first. Only guy that beat him. Um, when Elizabeth Elevated came out, the parallel dip bars, what happened? He won, beat everybody by a lot. I get it. He's a gymnast. Right. right. The, that, um, that's the thing. A lot of the gymnastics based things that are new, he's going to chaos. Nobody knew what was going on there. Yeah. He won that. Like if it's new, he's usually pretty awesome. 
And if Jeff is the opposite, Fair. if it's new, he's usually pretty trash. Yeah. Yep. And then, and then Roman, but Roman is also, I think Roman. Roman is very good at adapting too, but I don't, I think Valner is better than everybody when it comes to adapting to new things. Um, and then Ricky, Ricky's hit or miss. Sometimes Ricky will be great. And sometimes he will not be great. There you go. JR agrees with you. Uh, Josh Woolley from Mammoth Training Methods. He is the coach of Emma Lawson and Jack Farlow. Uh, listen closely to what he has to say about them. Coming off the back of the open, our, I guess to start with Emma, is she feeling good? Is There's no niggles, no, like she has no concerns or anything other than the usual wear and tear? Yeah, no, I think for the most part, she's feeling pretty good. Um, you know, people see what they see on social media and then think everything is always peachy in these athletes' lives, but they, they definitely go through some stuff. So we've been dealing with a few things kind of outside of the gym, um, but everything's good. And uh, I know she's excited for Speaking of. Well, that's interesting. Things are good in the gym, but not great outside of the gym. Why Any concerns? I don't know. That that was a that was one of the few times that anybody spoke and didn't say something super positive. Or her and Jack on the rocks? I don't know. I don't know. That would suck. It would be. Um, I would immediately think Jack Farlow is no longer an up and comer. At that point. <laughs> well, he's got one of the best training partners in yeah, the world, man. That's my true. Um, don't I don't know if they broke up. Don't start that rumor. I I've just uh, uh, I don't know. Somebody, it, was just, it, was, it was just very somebody odd. might have passed away. You know what I mean? Like she might yeah. have had something bad. Like it, it was, everything's good in the gym. You know what I mean? She might have just had something that comes up, like some personal thing. Yeah. Hopefully it's nothing serious and it's just and getting through. Hopefully it. it's not like mental. Right. Right. Uh, like six for six, and we need to put a twenty-one age limit on when you can join the games. Yeah, if if Emma Lawson, just for up. women, just for women, men are <laughs> men are cool, men are cool. Twenty-one, you got to be twenty-one or older for women. Yeah, uh, here we go, Facundo. Oh, hang on. He he had uh, like a very very good showing um, in Miami and Waterpalooza. He seems to have made some changes in the off season, like mentally as well as some of his training. Maybe that he's been doing. Are you expecting big things this year? I talked to Guy uh, yesterday, actually, he, he was very happy. It is true that, um, I mean, Guy spoke openly about his struggles uh, he had last year. I think that, that we can say that is in the past and this year he could concentrate differently. Uh, you know, Manny Guy is happy. Happy Guy is a good Guy. So there you go. I guess, Adam, man. I want to Adam, see fast, I want fast running Guy. Yeah, he's got to do, show us some speed. He'll get into Copa Sur, no problem, but... We'll like see how he's, he does. he's been happy before. Like, I don't, I don't, that doesn't do anything. He won, for me. he won games events when he was happy. He was not happy last year. Uh, Adam Niefer, Justin Medeiros. He on the outside would have said, and I'm sure he said himself that last season would have been classified as a disappointment for him, um, compared to the years that came before it. Is it difficult to kind of lift things to bounce back after that, or with someone like him, is it easy because he's just desperate to improve on the things that let him down? Yeah, I. I think that when you describe last season as a disappointment and outcome for Justin, that's that's accurate for sure. You know, after winning the games twice to move down the leaderboard leaderboard that far was a uh, yeah, it was a tough pill to swallow. But um, at the same time, as we started um, planning and preparing for this year, that's the the best medicine. Is uh, he's hungry to get back to work and excited to to just get deeper into this season? Yeah. Madero's top ten at the games, John. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Andre Huday. What do you think? Absolutely. We I'll say yes. <laughs> You're I'll so dramatic. Yes. But I'm not. I'm. Not, I'm not as confident as you are. I think this year is definitely telling. Um, if he wants to get a chance back on the podium, he has to have a good year this year. Otherwise, I think he's going to be a Catherine David's daughter. Two wins. She got second place like five years later. Right. But I mean, she'll float around there and but not be. That just that, be that one, was just 2020. Be one, one, that was, yeah, I, that, I understand. I know. I know. I know. That was count. a low. That was a low blow. But uh, yeah. just be just be one of the people that are there. Right. Yeah. Uh, Andre Hude. He stellar uh, debut season last year at the games. For sure. I mean, hundred percent. That uh, that brings a lot of pressure. But like I said, we've been this working. Is, this is talking about Yellow Hoste and uh, getting ready for quarterfinals. We've been working really hard since last year, and he's improved a lot on some of his weaknesses, which were the only things that you know, put him in a outside top 40 spot last year. So 
we're really looking forward to seeing how he's gonna how he's gonna respond in some of those tests that um that exposes exposed some weaknesses in the past and you know for sure we haven't reached the level yet of where those are absolute strengths but they have improved massively so we're looking forward to seeing how he he will do in those tests and hopefully he will not be close to the cut line like hopefully he will not be close to the cut line <laughs> I, do you like do you like yellow's chances on these workouts not really no <laughs> I don't. I don't. because he's not super strong here's the thing here's the thing like like Fakowski will bail himself out by doing way better on the clean and jerk workout than anybody gives him credit for i remember right. i thought Fakowski was done for and then he got like second in the world in um 30 clean and jerks and 30 bar facing burpees, uh, right. which is not something he should get second in the world in. I don't know what he's second in the world, but he was he had like a top score. Um Yellow Hosta is not that. Yellow Hosta is not very strong. Yellow Hosta is a home run hitter, but like he's not the strongest guy. And there's not uh, a home run on these four workouts. Well, I mean, the home run would be the wall ball burpee one, but it's a hundred. I just not no. <laughs> I I know. Um, I think he he might he'll be very good at workout one. I think he'll be extremely yeah. good at workout one. But, dude, I don't think so, man. I think I don't. It's, it's, he's gonna have a really tough time. Yeah. You'd be lying to yourself if you don't have something going on at all points of the go. season. And I think the obvious one here is Tia. We're just trying to figure out what's happening with her. But her trajectory since the Open has been nothing but good. Um, but you get into that world, right, where if you're the six-time fittest woman on earth, you want to win quarterfinals, like no matter what. And even if you just came off an injury or if you're coming off from having a baby, she wants to win. But it's going to be up to us this year kind of hold her back a little bit because she just needs to get through this week. Everything injury-wise with the rest of the athletes, there's absolutely nothing serious that we're worrying about at all right now. Um, people just have the typical wear and tear of the season going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to. Fergie show. Frog grips taking down Tia. I don't know. Maybe. Watching too much Hiller. Um, do you buy that? Do you buy that Tia is where she needs to be? She could actually <laughs> destroy everybody, but they're going to hold her back. I don't know, man. We'll we'll see. Does she finish top ten in the world in quarterfinals? No. I'm it's a lot of front that. rack, man. It's a lot of front rack. Yeah. Hurting that wrist. And she doesn't have to. But the hard part is you don't know where everybody is going to be. I guess you can compare against Maddie and Sydney. Well, like Liz, I think she'll be really good at the burpee. Oh, I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make that noise. Um, the uh, top 10 in the world, guys, not in her region. Yeah. Um, the. I think she'll go really hard on workout one and two and kind of see where she's at. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, if you, but if you do them out of order, it's pretty tough. To yeah. 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 But like, I think she'll like those two are the ones that she should push to, to evaluate her engine, right. Or her fitness. She knows she's going to be strong yeah. enough. She knows, you know, like she could I'm probably go about, rep for rep with Brooke on. The I don't think I mean, I'm not worried about anything other than possibly Workout four at the top end, doing clean and jerks. But again, it's not the, like you said; it's not the hot, it's not heavy enough. But it could be if her if her wrist is really bothering her, and then workout yeah, three with the, with the handstand pushups. Yeah, but like the snatches at eighty five, not an issue. No, the wall balls, not an issue. It's really the handstand pushups and the ring muscle ups, and then possibly the clean and jerks if it was really bothering her. But fitness wise, I don't think she has an issue. Uh, he now talks about our Aussies. I tell you, those three Aussies right now, Tia, Jay, and Maddie are, I mean, they're a different breed. Like, I haven't been around the three of them training at full capacity ever before. And Maddie specifically, she came with us last year and she was coming off a, a missed games appearance. She did okay at semifinals, but nowhere where she wanted to be. She wasn't with us yet. She saw what happened with Jay. She came on with us fully and she's been here for six weeks now. And she's a night and day different athlete. 
Um, same with Jay. Jay just keeps impressing us. Every single week he's in the gym, something's getting better with him. So I think it's going to be an absolute dogfight with him and Ricky, obviously. I know they're both excited about it and they've competed against each other before, but we're honestly, for Jay, we're looking at the games at this point. Like, what can he do at the games to get even better than he did last year? The, I think Jay Crouch could be a top five this year. No shot. Man. No None. shot. Okay. okay. None. 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 Okay. Nope. I don't know. I think he's a, a dark horse top five this year. Um, are we getting off on Savon's time? Or are we going over? Yep. No, we're going to get off right at, right at eight. Uh, emotions over the last week or so then, have you been like mourning? Have you been celebrating? Is it a mix of both? It's a mix of both. I'd say because because I've had... I've been struggling like on a personal level, the business, I mean, it's great. Like th there's been some amazing accomplishments, but to be honest with you, it's been hard working kind of on my own. I've had a great team working with me, but when I'm talking about more on the international level, like going to competitions, taking care of athletes, taking care of the overview of the business, I've been on my own for so long that, that I just needed to be part of a team. So I'm personally, I'm really happy about it. I've mourned over the last, you know, four months. So the emotions of sadness are almost all gone. There you go. A little background on uh, Deca going over to HWPO. She needs a team. Uh, there's okay. a bunch more. I would recommend you guys go to Coffee Pods and Wads. Go check out all of the press conferences that Pedro hosted. Uh, there's a lot more information in there. Gets into some pretty good stuff. Um, make sure you go check that out. Um, all right. We definitely have to get to some blind rankings. So Let's do it. This is just me. It's just gonna be you. Um, so oh man. This this will be uh this will be interesting. Maybe to, to uh, draw upon the comments. Hmm. Maybe. We'll see. I'm Maybe gonna go with my gut no matter what. I'm not influenced by these people. All right. We'll we'll see how good you are on your own. Let me uh let me change this up here. Tyler, Tyler's always dragging first, me down. First man. of all, Manta Sleep. I got my own Manta Sleep mask. It's right here. It's the best thing out there. Go use code SPIN, mantasleep.com. Save 10%. Use it every night. So, all right, here we go. This one's pretty appropriate. The topic is quarters jeopardy. Okay. I don't know what that means, but okay. It is which athletes are most in jeopardy of doing poorly at quarterfinals and not advancing to semifinals. Okay. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. Here we go. First one. Yellow hosted. One. One. That was fast. Decisive. Yeah. All right. Now, these are people who have made semifinals, right? Yes. They're all. All right. I think they're all games athletes. All right, I good. Like you fun. can't pull a. It's uh, not some random. It's not yeah, John yeah. Young. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. That guy's that guy's <laughs> over one, over one. Then. All right, here we go. Next one. Alex Carone. Hmm. Is he healthy? He hurt his pec at Wadapalooza doing the dips, and then he okay. finished out for the team competition uh, for Mayhem. So four. I would that was a couple months ago. Four. All right. So these are again most likely to not qualify for semifinals. All right. Next one. Amanda Barnhart. Three. Three. Oh. I'm trying to give myself like a, some, yeah, a little bit of a buffer. Yeah. I'm trying to like have options. All right, here we go. You got two and a five left. James Sprague. Oh, easy money. Five. That's great. Oh, this is great. This is great. Unless unless this person's like Dallin or something. <laughs> like then then it's then it's not great. But no. I think what this is gonna show is that uh Tyler is the one that messes up. Brooke the Wells is for you guys. Is yeah. Brooke? And it's not Brooke. It is a female though. I think you'll say you nailed this one. Bethany Flores. Sounds good, man. Put her at two. Number two. I think she will murder workout too, though. I mean, if you go back on her Instagram, 
she has been dealing with some serious back injuries. Uh, if I could have gotten, if we had enough time, not pass you guys off, not get you to Savon show. Uh, Perrin was talking about like, they're pretty much going to take a, a run at it and see how it goes. But they're, I don't, I'm not sure they're most confident about it. Um, I well, like Bethany's so hard because like Bethany, Bethany might be like top 10 games level fit. She's right. just never healthy. Right. Not her fault, but it's just the case. It, it is what it is. It, yeah. She got, she got screwed over in 21. Yeah. Um, that would have been her year, I think. And that would have been, been her best year for sure. Yeah, that that was it. Um, yeah, I, I think Yella and Bethany are probably the two that are at most risk. Bethany because of injury only. Yella because it just doesn't line up for him. Amanda because of her shoulder. I think I nailed this blind rankings. Yeah, James was an easy one, but uh, I was hoping you didn't have a five left. You're running out of options. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I hope you. I was hoping you have to put him somewhere else and, and kind of get you. Um, all right. And we'll run through the workouts, uh, real quick here. Bent with the boys, just the two of us, Taylor versus the world real quick in one minute. Who wins workout one? Dallin pepper. I'm going with Dallin pepper too. workout two burpees and wall balls, bro. Dallin Pepper. Going with the Berkby King, Colton Mertens. Workout three, gymnastics. Taylor Self. I'll go with Taylor. And workout four, a whole bunch of clean and jerks. This is a hard one because I want I want to pick Hopper. But I'm going with Dallin Pepper again, man. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm on that's, the Dallin Pepper three train. Out four. Three out yeah, of four. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I, I I can't. Yeah, Dallin Pepper. Sorry, sorry, Jason. Sorry. Uh, Workout two. It. I have no idea. To, and you picked you picked Colton. I picked Colton. Workout two literally could be anybody. I in my in my I, opinion, I could just, easily I, see it be Taylor wins two, Colton wins two, or I mean D Dallin wins two and Colton wins two. Yeah, I could one hundred percent see it being that. I I just. I think Taylor's best shot is workout three. I think he knows that. And I think he will. I think he's, you know, Taylor, when Taylor gets determined, he's hard to bet against. Yep. Uh, Don Fondal, uh, CEO also go to heat one. You'll be able to make your picks, uh, for that win $2,500 on the spot before we leave. Last question. Does Taylor self qualify for semifinals? Yes. 